There's two things I want to talk about in this video. One is planned obsolescence, and the second one is right to repair. And I'm going to start by just telling you a little bit of a story about my uncle. So when he was first diagnosed with sleep apnea, he went to the clinic and bought himself a ResMed S8 machine. That was the best selling brand at the time, top of the line S8. And to this very day, my uncle is still using the ResMed S8. He hasn't gone to the S9, he hasn't gone to the SNS10. As far as he's concerned, he's sleeping well, machine's doing the job, and he's happy. But about three or four years into his therapy, he noticed that the power button on the machine just stopped working. And his machine was out of warranty, but he took it back to ResMed and said, I just need to buy the power button. And they said, Unfortunately, you can't buy components of the machine, but what we can do is we can send it away and it's gonna cost $250 for the repair. And if you wanna hire a machine, it's gonna cost you $100. So he's like, okay, $350, that's a lot of money. And he calls me up and he says, you know, Res, we wanna charge me $350, can you help me? I said, I can have a look at it for you. So I jumped on some forums, had a bit of a look around, and what I noticed was, Everyone with these ResMed S8 machines was having the same problem. After a few years, the power button just stopped working. And I was like, that's a bit, bit strange. And then I read one guy who did a bit of a fix where he took the power button out and he noticed that there were these two little sort of prongs that came out of place where the power button goes down and he you know, bent them back in and sure enough, it was working again. Really simple fix, super simple. And that's what I did, I fixed it. It took me about 10 minutes and the machine's been working fine ever since and no other problem. So just a few weeks ago, I put out a video talking about a potential fault with the DreamStation 1 device. Basically, there's this foam inside it and it could be breaking down and causing a health risk. And many of you just started commenting saying, this just seems too coincidental. Like they've just released the DreamStation 2 and now there's a problem with the 1. Like, is this their way of trying to get people to buy the new machine. And, and, and I don't know, but it did get me thinking about the S8 machine, the ResMed machine, because I thought to myself, I wonder how many people had this power button issue? And then they got told it was gonna be $350 and they just went, nah, whatever, I'll just buy the S9. I don't wanna throw money away on an old machine. Now, when I did fix my uncle's machine, he was super happy and he said to me, you should start fixing CPAP machines. And so I did. It was about two months in, things were going really well and I got a knock at the door and it was a registered post from the postman, I opened it up and it's a legal letter from ResMed basically saying, uh, you need to take your website down, you can't do this, you can't do that. I took it to a lawyer, the lawyer said it's all bullshit but if you wanna fight it, it's gonna cost a lot of money and I just didn't have any money to fight it. So I just closed the website, forgot all about it. But I thought I'd bring it up today because what I've realized is the manufacturers really don't want you repairing, or not even CPAP, anyone. They really don't want you repairing your equipment. They want to make it so that you buy a new one. So forget about fixing up your old S8 that's a bit noisy or got a broken button, go and get the S9. And then when that heater plate breaks down or whatever, buy the ASNs 10 and you just keep sort of going through the motion. And I'm sure many of you have already done this. So guys, if you wanna watch a really great video on planned obsolescence, just click in the top right hand corner now. It's a fascinating story about the light bulb, the never ending light bulb, and it's called Why We Can't Have Nice Things. And you wouldn't read about it, but Philips is actually one of the companies involved. So go check out that video. But basically what it is, is planned obsolescence is companies really don't want things to last a long time. They want you to sell you something and then it breaks and then they sell you something more and then it breaks and then you keep upgrading your gear. A really good example of it is how Apple, the phone I'm filming on right now, introduced software that made their older phones go really slow. 
so that people were like, oh, this is hard to use. I may as well just get the new one. And since forever, companies have been planning this sort of planned obsolescence so that their equipment eventually sort of breaks down and you have to upgrade to the new one. And this is where right to repair comes in. And I think it's a movement that's really gaining traction. So right to repair is essentially that when you buy something like a CPAP machine and it's out of warranty, you have the right to buy the components essentially and try and fix it yourself or have it fixed. So these companies will, will let you fix the equipment, but they do it in a way that, that almost makes it not worth it. And I'll give you an example. So Philips, I know I feel like I'm picking on Philips here, but so Philips in Australia have what they call fixed price servicing. So if you've got an old System 160 series or a Dream Station or whatever machine you've got, if you've got a fault with it after the warranty period, they're gonna charge you $395 no matter what the issue. If your button stops working, $395. You know, if you spill a bit of water on it or the screen stops working or whatever, $395 across the board. $395 is a huge amount of money to spend repairing you know, a CPAP machine, especially when you look at it and you go, oh, it's a little bit old, maybe I should spend that $395 and upgrade to the new one. It's almost at that price point where it makes people buy the new machine because it almost seems like a waste of money to put $395 into an older device, you know what I mean? And they don't let you just buy the different components. Same thing goes for ResMed and some of the others as well. Like ResMed charge a ridiculous amount per hour to work on their CPAP machines, 150, something around that mark. It's over $100. And the components themselves are insanely priced in terms of replacing the components. So when you get your quote back and you pick it up and it's $500 to change a motor or you know $600 or whatever it is, straight away you go, nah, I'll just buy the next one because it's just not worth it. Now, if these machines were like super high tech and really, really complex and heaps of electrical components all welded together, I can understand that. You know, it's, it's a tricky fix. Um, if you look at some of the Apple products, that they're quite tricky to fix. But if you've ever opened up a CPAP machine, there's really not a whole lot to them. I've got some parts here. You've got your turbine. It's just, a, it's an air pump. It brings in air through one end, pushes it out the other, okay? And it's got a little connector that you connect to the circuit board. Your PCP board, you know, your circuitry, just a little board, all right? Then you've got your little heater plate. Once again, one little connection. You take that out, plug that back in, you fix your heater plate. And this is just a little screen as well. You just plug that in and it's done. CPAP machines are super, super basic in terms of their internal components. There's not a whole lot to them. And they're actually really, really easy to fix as well. You know, if you, in terms of just taking out a component and plugging it in, it's plug and play. You literally take off the shell, you grab that part, you plug it in and you fixed it. But they don't want you fixing the machines. I personally love the idea of right to repair you know, wouldn't it be fantastic if you could buy a CPAP machine and then know that no matter what happens in the future, you have the ability to replace any of the parts that break down so that you can essentially have your CPAP machine forever. I don't feel you should be pushed to constantly buy and upgrade your CPAP machine, especially if they're not making dramatic improvements in the technology or the features or the comfort. But anyway, let me know what you think, guys. I hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are. Um, thanks for all your support throughout the years. Uh, it's incredible to know that, you know, the little channel that I started a few years ago now has 30,000 of you subscribed and, and, and loving it. So a big thumbs up to you all. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm also loving watching all of you help each other out in the comment section. Uh, if someone's got an issue or a question, seeing other people answer those questions is just is fantastic. And I really feel like we've built a fantastic little community here. So all the best. I'm sorry if I've been a bit negative lately. I'm going to try and uh, put on my happy face over the next few weeks and, and talk about some more fun stuff. Stop being so negative. All right.
Have a great night. See you later. Bye.